Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Hoops with Noops. Of course, I am Alex Noops Christensen, and every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I am here to give you my thoughts on every game in the NBA. Monday and Friday, we have a video edition. The other days, it is written. Great, great time in the NBA. A lot of games going on. We've got about 24 matchups left for each team this season, and things are really starting to tighten up. We've got three teams, the Timberwolves, Nuggets, and Thunder within one and a half games of the, of the top seed in the Western Conference. The Celtics have the top seed in the East pretty much wrapped up, but the Cavaliers and Bucks have the same record. The tiebreaker going, I believe, right now to Milwaukee, but a very close matchup between those two teams for not only the Central Division title, but the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. You've got teams like the Lakers and the Warriors that have locked in basically playing tournament spots, but now have their eyes on trying to catch up with the Pelicans in the sixth seed in the Western Conference so they don't have to worry about the playing tournament and get automatic entry into the playoffs. Bad teams have already lost enough games to start the season. You see teams like San Antonio, Detroit, really comfortable, and even Washington winning games here to try to help their young players. And again, they're not winning games, but at least you see the effort there. They really are pushing these guys to try to get them ready for next season, and they can do that without messing up the chances that they have for the top pick in the draft. It's a really great time in the NBA. We've got nine games tonight. I'll get through each of them, but be sure – Give me a thumbs up here. Subscribe to this channel. You get a lot of great free content here, but also be sure to sign up for FTN. A lot of great data, really good tools, sharp models, and access, of course, to the community in the FTN Bets Discord. There's a lot of good conversations going on, a lot of extra picks going out. I put out player props there, a lot of futures, a lot of things that just don't get into these pieces here. So, again, we'll go through all the games, but if you want the full experience and a lot of value, be sure you sign up for FTN. You can see down below a discount code in the ticker. Of course, be sure to check the accounts on social media, whether it be FTN Fantasy or FTN Bets. There's often other specials running for an even bigger discount for a great great product a lot of good stuff in there and something that i use and, and rely on every day but nine games to get through one that i have a bet in and the other eight i'll give you a little bit of the lay of, lay, lay of the land in not for noobs let's start with the game i do well i don't like it but i am betting this game the portland trailblazers go to memphis to play the grizzlies the grizzlies one and a half point favorites with a total of 208 which i promise you is not an error it's unbelievable how low this total is given how much scoring we've seen this season you know your average total for games has been closer to 230 points not as low as 210 now there have been a handful of games that are 210 212 things like that it's an outlier game here because what we've got with memphis there's no jaron jackson jr tonight we know desmond bain is out john morant's out for the season marcus smart is out brandon clark was never able to play this season also some support pieces missing for them it is just a dearth of talent in that memphis locker room and at the same time portland is without both of their point guards malcolm brogdon jr and scoot henderson and it was likely to be missing deandre ayton there just isn't a lot of good nba talent here which means we've got players we don't have a lot of data on and we even have less data on how they have played together these are hard numbers to make and for sports books a lot of times they often set spreads and totals within a sort of a range or a limit of what they're used to seeing maybe said another way there's probably games where teams should be 20 point favorites but you'll never see that there should probably be totals like this one that should be closer to 200 but you'll never see something like that and that's exactly what i'm getting at i love the under here i have this total like 201 202 points and again it's a tough number to make but you look at the way these teams play they're both slow paced teams two of the slower teams in the nba they both try to rely on making games ugly so they can stand up defensively to give their teams the best possible chance to win despite the lack of talent here there's just not a lot of scores here there's not a lot of shooters I mean, Jeremy Grant, who is a decent player, but by all means not a great scorer or shooter, is probably the most skilled offensive player in this game, especially if Luke Kennard is also out tonight as well. It's just a mess of a basketball game, and the good news is we don't have to watch it. I won't be watching it. I'll be looking at the score from time to time to see how things are going, maybe a live total just to see where the market is in terms of what's actually going on, but I think this is a great spot for an under. I, I There's always a chance in games like this where, Younger players use this time as an audition. 
try to push pace, basically give them more opportunities to show other teams, to show the teams that they're on, that they can contribute, that they can do something good and be part of an NBA roster. But again, given the way these coaches have built these teams, they push them all year to be slow, to play great defense. I think this game, there might be a chance neither team scores 100 points here. So give me under 208. I think this is good down to 207, even 206. Um so it's starting to move a little bit again. It moved a little bit this morning. Should be an ugly basketball game. Don't watch it, but definitely bet it. Now, let's get into Not for Noobs, where I try to at least walk you through all the other games, give you just some quick thoughts, what I'm concerned about, what I'm uncertain about, and maybe why I'm not betting some of these games. And we'll start with the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are visiting the Detroit Pistons. The Cavaliers, nine-point favorites in Detroit, the total 221.5. Detroit is one of those bad teams I mentioned that have already lost enough games that they can start to push their players. They won their last game outright. Although I don't expect them to win games, I expect them to continue to be competitive. Their players are playing hard. They're trying to build some sort of form and figure things out going into next year. This Cleveland team is coming off a two-overtime loss. Now, they had a day off in between that game, but Mobley, um, Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland all played 42 plus minutes. Mitchell is listed as questionable tonight and the Cavaliers don't need him to win this game. It would make a lot of sense for them to arrest him. So you know, a less than perfect Cavaliers team should be tired, possibly without one of their stars. Can we trust them to lay, cover nine points in Detroit. Maybe I, I really think there is a chance they could win this game in a blowout, but it's a tough spot for them. And I'm pretty close. I show a little bit of value on Detroit. I make this closer to seven and a half, eight, but just not enough to back them. So as much as I think Detroit can keep this game ugly, keep it close, this does look like almost a bounce back spot for Cleveland where without Donovan Mitchell, they sort of rally here to win this game big to get a cut, get themselves back on track. And again, continue to push for that second seed in the East. So it's just hard for me to figure this one out. I'm going to let it go. Although I do lead Detroit if you are looking for some action here. The Charlotte Hornets go to Philadelphia. The Sixers somehow 11 and a half point favorites, a total of 214. The Sixers have been really bad without Joel Embiid. A little better the last couple games now. They've got some other support pieces healthy, and the roster's a little bit deeper. But overall, Tyrese Maxey has not been good enough to carry this team to win a lot of basketball games. However, they play against the Charlotte Hornets team that played last night at home. They travel to Philadelphia. Their two best players, Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller, played 37-plus minutes. Now, they are younger players but that is still tough from a fatigue standpoint. This Hornets team is really short in terms of roster depth. It could be a tough game for them. It's a really bad spot, but at the same time, I can't justify betting the Sixers minus 11 and a half. As much as 11 and a half isn't enough points for me to bet Charlotte, it's too many for me to bet on Philadelphia. Uh, this game is really kind of tough. I hope the Sixers can get a comfortable win as a Philadelphia fan, but I'm definitely not betting them, and I don't like this spot for the Hornets. The Golden State Warriors played last night in New York. Not a tough game for them, but they go to Toronto tonight. The Raptors, three-point underdogs, the total 236.5. The Warriors may have had some trouble on their plane, um, flew in a little bit later, but they're a veteran team. They can handle this. The flight from New York to Toronto is nothing to talk about anyway. It's very quick. Um, not worried about a team in Golden State that is on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, but has done well in those spots this year. They're 7-4-1 and one against the spread on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Um, eight and five overall in those spots. I'm sorry, eight and four overall in those spots. It was one too many games there. Um, they just know how to manage this. Steve Kerr is a good coach. These are veteran players. Again, they know how to kind of keep themselves fresh so they are competitive in these games. I make Golden State a little bigger favorite than this, but again, given the travel spot, given how good Toronto's been, I can't justify laying points with Golden State in this spot. The Raptors have a nice starting five, but that's just about it. Only about five or six guys on that team that are really going to be there, I think, long term. It's a tough game for them. I think they can win it, but just not enough value in this number for me to bet on that. The Dallas Mavericks go to Boston. The Celtics nine and a half point favorites. If you're wondering why that number is so big, Luka Doncic is questionable, and my guess is likely to be out here given the way this number has moved. Boston was expected to slow down a bit here in the second half of the season, rest some stars, try to save their best stuff for the postseason. We haven't seen that. They continue to win games and win them by margin. They can definitely beat this Mavericks team. And if Luka is out, there's just too much here for Dallas to contend with. If Doncic is in and we still get a chance to bet the Mavericks, say, you know, plus seven, plus seven and a half, I might be interested in that. 
But again, just too hard to tell. If I do make that bet, I will put it in the aforementioned FTN Bets Discord channel, which you can get access to as part of any FTN package. So again, be sure to sign up. You'll get that play if I make it later. Nothing for now. The Sacramento Kings go to Minnesota to play the Timberwolves, a six and a half point spread with a total of 224. We don't know if the two best guards on this either team is playing. De'Aaron Fox is questionable. So is Anthony Edwards. Fox is really the key to what makes the Sacramento Kings great. They really need both him and Sabonis to create the opportunities on offense that make them what they are at their very best. Minnesota can still play good defense and grind games out, but Anthony Edwards is really the key to making them the best version of themselves. If both can play, this should be a really fun game. I think it's going to be close. If both are out, might be a good spot to back and under, given the limitations on Sacramento's offense and how much and how good Minnesota is on defense. Again, the best defense in the NBA, but nothing for now. Once the injury report clears up, I might make a bet again, and I'll put it in that Discord channel I just mentioned. Indiana Pacers go to New Orleans. The Pelicans five and a half point favorites to the total of 238 and a half. These two teams just played a couple days ago. The Pelicans won by nine points in Indiana. They come home. They're totally healthy. I think they can win this game comfortably, but it's an interesting matchup. New Orleans likes to play a little slower pace, more physical on both ends of the court, and more focused on getting into the lane and scoring points there, whereas Indiana plays fast, shoots a lot of threes, and is not a very physical team. They play with speed. It's going to be a fun game to watch, but I just don't see much value on either side here. I think New Orleans can dictate and win this game. I would maybe bet on them again if you have to have something here, but I just don't see any value in it. Again, lean Pelicans here, but nothing for me. The Milwaukee Bucks go to Chicago to play the Bulls for the fourth time this season. All those games have been pretty close. Chicago is even able to win one finally. Uh, Milwaukee generally does pretty well against them. But the Bucks a different team here since the All-Star break. Playing much slower, much better defense. I think this game has the potential to be a little bit ugly here. I make this game Milwaukee minus five, but... Again, on the road here in what should be an ugly division game, two teams that know to play each other, it's going to be close. I really just don't see any value here either way, and just not much to pick apart. Again, we've got division teams. They play each other four times a year. This is the fourth time they've played. This line should be pretty sharp, and it looks to be to me. The final game we've got here, the Washington Wizards go to Los, stay in Los Angeles, rather, to play the Clippers. The Wizards were in Los Angeles, lost to the Lakers last night. In overtime, Denny Abdia, their best, most important player, played 40-plus minutes in his first game back from injury. I would assume that he's out tonight. If he could play, I think maybe Washington can keep this game close, but even if he does play, he's going to be less than 100%. It's hard to trust this Washington team in this spot. They have been really bad on the second night of back-to-backs. Again, put forth a lot of energy on that first night. Generally don't cover in the second night. The Clippers are coming off a tough loss to the Lakers themselves. Uh, Paul George is questionable, as is Zubach. Could be a tough spot for them without either guy, but probably not. The Wizards are really bad. The Clippers still have a lot of depth. They should win this game comfortably with or without those two players. So uh, this spread makes sense to me here. It's it just I would. I want to bet Washington. I've said that before. I think they can be really competitive with this lineup late in games with some of these big spreads. But without Abdia or with a less than 100% Abdia, it's hard to trust Washington to be their best version of themselves. And I'm not going against the Clippers here. So I'll let that one go. Of course, the game I do like, give me the under in the Portland Trailblazers Memphis Grizzlies game. And again, don't watch it. Just bet it. It's just going to be an ugly game. I like this under 208. Again, we'll play this down as low as 206. I really enjoy it. Again, don't watch the game, but be sure that you watch all the other great videos here on this channel. Mean Streets with Chris Meany is really fantastic. He is crushing the NHL this season. The College Basketball Show with Mike Randall has been fantastic. Make sure you get all that content. Of course, sign up for FTN. There's a lot more great stuff that you could have access to. As always, I mentioned that FTN Bets Discord channel. I'll have more plays there. You get access to these bets first. If you were in there, you got a little better number on that Memphis total. Again, 208 still fine, but you could have done better. As always, sign up for FTN. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to get back to them and try to help you out as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and best of luck. I'll be back on Monday with more Hoops with Noobs.